Okay. I think I'm on. <laughs> uh, if there, hello everybody. Uh, if you can see me, if somebody could just give me a, a line in the chat, that would be great. Okay, great. Okay, I am seeing you. Great. Uh, okay, sorry about that. I had some technical difficulties. Uh, apparently, Facebook uh, changed the format of this a little bit, and I, I wasn't aware of that. So sorry about the, uh, the inconvenience and the tardiness, but I am... Um, doing this from my kitchen in Athens. We left New York uh, two weeks ago, and it's great to be back. Uh, it's beautiful weather, it's uh, Greek summer almost, and uh, things are starting to loosen up here. Tomorrow the restaurants and cafes and bars will be open. So I think uh, the next couple of weeks will be very, very uh, relieving, uh, especially in comparison to how we have survived over the last couple of months. Uh, I'm just going to check to see. Okay, it looks like, every, looks like people are coming in. Great. So uh, I just want to uh, let you know that I will be answering all of the chat questions as soon as I'm done. Uh, and that's also simply a logistical issue because my computer's a little bit far away from me, so I can't really go back and forth very easily. I'm in a different kitchen. I'm in my uh, home kitchen uh, in Athens. Um, so welcome. Uh, thank you for tuning in. And I wanted to do today something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, which is uh, a, a very quick uh, tutorial, very quick recipe using one of the world's oldest ingredients. Uh, it's a very, very old food, uh, especially in this part of the world. It's called trahana. And I, I'm hoping that most of you have heard of it. Um, I have a bag right here. Drahana is essentially, was essentially a way to preserve milk uh, long before the era of refrigeration. And all over the Eastern Mediterranean, there are different uh, versions of it, different varieties, different types. And it, it is just one of the most unique and fascinating ingredients in this part of the world. I love it. My kids grew up on it. Uh, it's the world's oldest, uh, or how, how shall I put this, the world's uh, fastest slow food, um, or slowest fast food, depending on how you, know, how you want to look at it. I, have, um, talk, I want to give you a little bit of background. There are different types of trahana. Uh, the word is actually, it actually comes from the texture, which uh, is a little bit pebbly. And I want to show you um, a handful of it right now. So this is uh, what we call sinos drahanas, or sour drahana. And it's not too sour, it's just, it's got a delicious tart flavor. And it's one of my um, absolute favorites uh, in terms of types of trahana that are out there. I'm just going to pour a little bit into my hand and bring it up to the camera. Hopefully you can see that. Um, the very, very small um, granules, literally like little pebbles. And the way that this is made, um, I actually sell this on the website, uh, the sour trahana. The way that this is made, um, is essentially by cooking either bulgur wheat or cracked wheat with different types of milk products, sometimes buttermilk, sometimes yogurt, sometimes whole milk, really depending on what part of Greece uh, it's, you're, you're in. Uh, this is from the Peloponnese region, and there are two main types, sour and sweet, and sour tends to be made with buttermilk, and sweet tends to be made with whole milk, and the difference in flavor is, is rather subtle. The sweet, what we call sweet rahana, is much more neutral uh, in flavor. The sour rahana has a lot of punch to it. If you like, um, the, if you like sort of strong cheeses, you'll like this. It's, I love it. It's, it's one of my favorite, again, one of my favorite ingredients. Um, it's made at the end of the summer, 
and it is typically uh, made into it's cooked you cook the, whole, the the cracked wheat or the or the um or the bulgur wheat with either buttermilk or yogurt or whole milk uh, there are actually even some vegetarian versions with vegetable pulp and you cook it until it becomes almost a very dense almost like an oatmeal think of like an overcooked oatmeal you what they do is they break that up into, into clumps and they let those clumps dry in the sun uh, covered with some netting and turn them over over the course of a few days until they dry on both sides and then it's pushed through a, um, a, a fine mesh sieve there are now autom automated ways to do it as well so there are, you know there are small producers who do it in an automated way you get more uh, standardized uh, granules that way but the flavor is still pretty much the same in crete um we call it we call it xenohondros and it tends to be a little bit bigger the shape is different there's also something really interesting a type of trahana on the end of lesbos uh, which is called hachles or kupes and they look like little cups and then the cypriots also have their own version of trahana which is similar to the cretan version it's kind of bigger chunks so I'm going to make a very, very, I'm going to make the basic soup. I have a, I always get so many questions about rachana. How do you use it? Uh, how long does it take to cook? How do you store it? So I figured the time was probably, you know, finally ripe uh, to do a little uh, cooking demo uh, using, again, one of the world's oldest ingredients and something that was uh, created many, you know, th probably thousands of years ago as a way to preserve a uh, dairy. Uh, long before the, the advent of refrigeration. So uh, trahana, when you cook it, the end result is basically a porridge and it's eaten um, in all sorts of different uh, ways. It is uh, traditionally the farmer's breakfast, but it's also something that uh, turns into a very quick meal. And as I said, I, I, my kids grow up on this. And I used to just uh, make a very simple, it's very comforting. So just a very simple kind of dense um, porridge-like soup. Um, often, in fact, my daughter, when she was a kid, maybe until the age of five or six, you know, I was always a working mom. I used to make this all the time. And at some point she said, basta, no more. I can't eat any, any more trahana, mom. And lo and behold, you know, 15, 20 years later, when she was a college student, uh, she called me up one day very sheepishly and she said, Mom, you know, do you know where I can get some trahana in New York City? So things, you know, came sort of full circle. It's very easy to cook. It's very nutritious and it's also very versatile. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ideas and different ways uh, to use it. The first thing I'm doing is um, looking for my olive oil. <laughs> um, I usually uh, make my trahana with a little bit of onion and some garlic. Uh, in, in, in the pan and I cook it all together just for some additional flavor. And I also um, will often add maybe a little bit of tomato to it, sometimes tomato paste. Today I'm using actually a, a red pepper paste to give it a little bit of color, but I'm gonna show you a couple of different versions. So I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, extra virgin Greek olive oil. And I have an onion that's already uh, chopped, just a red onion. And that's going in here. I'm still not used to being back in my own kitchen, uh, but it does feel good to be back in Greece. It's, it's, I was in New York for four months. Uh, anyone uh, who tuned in uh, over the course of those four months to Facebook or to the online classes um, kind of got a sense of the intensity of the situation in New York. I think things are calming down there now too. Uh, we're all hoping that we have an uneventful summer. Um, yeah, that's about it. So I just, I'm just cooking up some onion. I uh, just, just want to soften it up, and I'll show you what, what that should look like in a minute. And I'm also um, using, I'm cheating a little bit today. Um, I'm using garlic paste. I wanted to also introduce you to some of the new products that uh, we ordered for the online shop that will be up and running, um, up and available, um, hopefully by the end of June. I think the order was just shipped. So something that I discovered here was this amazing garlic paste with Greek, made with Greek garlic. So I thought, you know, why not save a little time? This is supposed to be slow, fast food, and it kind of worked well uh, in, in this particular situation. Even professional cooks 
get tired of chopping garlic sometimes. So I'm just softening uh, the onion, and I'll show you uh, what that looks like. I think you can see it there. I think I need to uh, adjust my lighting a bit. And I'm going to add just a, um, a little bit of this garlic paste, which is very, very potent. It's going right in. And I'm going to measure out the grahana. I like to, I like to munch on this raw, too. Uh, something to remember uh, when you make grahana, this will absorb six to eight times its volume in liquid. And you can cook it with um, a broth. You can use bone broth, you can use chicken broth, you can use vegetable broth if you wanted to keep it vegetarian. Um, I'm using uh, just a, a quick uh, vegetable broth that I made a little bit earlier. And I want to get the garlic stirred around too. I think you can probably hear that sputtering. So I'm going to add um, a half a cup of to this. I'm not going to make a very large portion. It's really just to show you how to cook this incredibly interesting uh, ingredient from the Eastern Mediterranean, from Greece. It's one of the most traditional uh, Greek products. So that's half a cup right there. And I always, as I do with almost all the grains that I cook, um, I mean, and not so much, not pasta, of course, but uh, rice, um, bulgur wheat sometimes, and uh, I will always uh, just stir it, about, stir it a bit uh, in the pot with olive oil, toss it to coat in the olive oil. Uh, for those of you who tuned in uh, a little bit later, I just want to say that I will be answering all the chat questions uh, as soon as I'm done with this. And that's simply a logistical issue because I can't reach my computer right now. Uh, so uh, have patience. I will answer everything. So I've just coated uh, the grahana in a little bit of olive oil. I think you can see that there. And I'm ready to add the liquid. So that was half a cup of uh, drahana. One, two, uh, three cups of broth. I might end up adding a little bit more water to that or a little bit more liquid um, as this cooks. This takes it doesn't take very long. It takes probably about 15, 10 to 15 minutes uh, to cook up. It really is um, a quick meal. And some of the ways that um, I like to serve it, and I've got some of those variations here, sometimes I will add um, mushrooms to this. Uh, you can add bits of, of meat to it if you like. Uh, you can add, as I mentioned earlier, any kind of tomato product, whether it's um, fresh tomatoes, chopped fresh tomatoes, or whole tomatoes, whole canned tomatoes that you might want to uh, squish with your fingers, or chopped tomatoes. Uh, Sun-dried tomatoes are very nice in this as well. I sometimes add just a little bit of tomato paste. Um, I think uh, we're hoping to get that Santorini tomato paste back. Um, that was a, a very popular item, and it's really delicious. Uh, this today I'm using a pepper paste just um, to, for a little bit of uh, variation, also also some color. And I'm not seeing questions yet, so that's good. So I'm just letting this simmer. Um, drahana is also used as filler sometimes in savory pies. There are actually whole savory pies that are made only with rahana or rahana and feta cheese together. Uh, so those are very, very rustic dishes and you usually find them in the north of Greece. Uh, so I, I love them. Actually, one of the things that I remember uh, when I first came to Greece and there was kind of a, kind of a food revolution here uh, as the Olympics approached and Greek chefs uh, were rediscovering the traditional foods of their own heritage. I remember being at an event and somebody had made uh, 
a flat rahana pie without any filo. It was just baked rahana, had cut it into little squares and had served that with shaved batarga. And it was one of the most uh, delicious combinations of flavors I, that I, I, I mean, I remember it, you know, 25 years later, it was so good. Um, I also sometimes will use trahana to stuff tomatoes with. That's a wonderful dish. I, I love to do that in the summer when I have, um, I usually do it with the small uh, pomodori, the, the plum tomatoes that I grow uh, in Icaria. And I'll just uh, mix that. I'll mix the trahana with a lot of mint and feta and a little bit of garlic and make a, and uh, the, the, the pulp from the tomato. And that is also very good. It's not like a rice filling. It's more like... In texture, it's more um, reminiscent. It resembles more of a breadcrumb filling because the granules uh, kind of disintegrate and become very comforting and and, and um, you know kind of a whole a whole mass. So it's a little bit different. This is smelling really really good. I'm going to get a little bit of salt in here. Now I have um, friends who have taken a liking to Prahana, uh, who are just discovering their Greek heritage and they love it for breakfast. Uh, sometimes in the traditional way with a little bit of feta cheese or Greek yogurt on top, a dollop of Greek yogurt. And sometimes um, with a little bit of a drizzling of honey or fetimezi, the grape uh, must syrup, the grape molasses. That's also, those are also really traditional. And I mean, think about, you know, porridge for breakfast, especially in farming communities and small villages where, you know, people wake up in the morning in the winter time or in the springtime and they've got their fields to tend to. They've got to go and prune olive trees or prune fruit trees uh, or, you know, pick, pick fruit. So you need something that's substantial and that will hold you until lunchtime, which tends to be a little bit later uh, in the day in Greece. So all of that kind of, you know, plays into this idea of a good hearty breakfast uh, this is, um, you know, by all accounts, the ultimate, uh, you know, kind of peasant food. Um, and I mean that in a good way. I say that in a good way. So I'm just stirring this up. I want to uh, show you what it looks like when it's pretty much cooked and ready to eat as it is. And then I'm going to add a little bit of color to it and show you just a couple of different ways to serve it. So, you know, this is a really easy dish. Um, I'm trying to think off the top of my head what other uh, uses I, I have um, encountered and, you know, things that I use it for. I sometimes use it when I make um, any kind of uh, greens pie or any kind of savory pie that has a loose filling that needs something to absorb, uh, you know, some potential excess liquid that might make the filo dough soggy. So I, I often add um, trahana because it has, it has flavor. Rice does the trick too, and so does bulgur wheat, but sour trahana, again, just packs in this amazing, you know, this almost, it's a cheesy kind of flavor. It's, uh, it's, it's like, you know, that, that um, goat's milk, that delicious goat's milk flavor. Um, although this is typically made um, with sheep's milk or with cow's milk, but there's something in the buttermilk that's sour, that fermented flavor that's really good. And this is, in fact, if you think about it, a fermented food. So that means it's really good for us. It's good for our gut health. Um, that's also come, things like that are coming into play now um, as we try to figure out um, this crazy virus that is uh, circling the globe and, you know, what what our diet, how our diet affects our immunity and our health. So in places like Greece, where um, the food is still quite um, traditional, uh, I think these problems are much less pronounced than they are uh, when, when you're eating a diet of processed food and you're, you know, you're shopping and you're shopping and eating frozen food and that sort of thing. Here, people still pretty much cook. And again, this is um, pretty traditional uh, you know, weeknight quick supper or uh, easy breakfast. So I'm just going to strengthen the flame a little bit so that it cooks up a little bit faster. And I often finish this. I also like to add heat to this. So I'll add a little bit of hot sauce sometimes or some red pepper flakes. Um, I'll drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil sometimes, and I have a uh, lemon here someplace, it's wonderful with a little bit of uh, grated lemon zest because the lemon zest 
just perks up everything and adds this beautiful, uh, refreshing component and astringent component to that earthiness of the drachana. It's, it's a really, really nice balance. So I want to show you where this is at because I've been standing over this pot uh, for the last couple of minutes. And you can see, I hope, that it's, um, it's still fairly loose. So it has a few more minutes to go. And um, just a little bit more um, on the varieties that you find around Greece and the variety that we chose. Um, I love this, um, I chose this drachana, which comes from um, the Southern Peloponnese, uh, from a small producer who also makes pasta, uh, because it reminded me the most of the stuff that I had had over the years um, in, you know, really, really country places. Even on Anikaria, we make drachana on Ikaria. Uh, people make it at home still. There even, there's even a monastery that makes it at the end of the summer and sells it um, as a way to uh, help support the monastery. So I, I was, you know, I always look for um, products that have a, a as deep sense um, of authenticity as possible. And that's why we chose this particular um, drachana. And this is now starting to cook, cook up into this wonderful... Uh, porridge, it's becoming nice and thick. Um, the granules have not totally disintegrated yet. Uh, they probably won't. Um, I ha would have to cook it a lot more for that to happen. I want to see how soft they are. So let me just uh, test it. But it has this beautiful, almost milky quality to it. And that's exactly what happens when you cook drachana. It's basically, you know, the dried milk that's in there uh, is exuded and you get this incredibly creamy, you know, very rich flavor uh, for something so simple. Mm, that is so good. That is pretty much ready. It didn't take 15 or 20 minutes. The longer I cook it, the more disintegrated the granules will be. I want to uh, serve a little bit of it in one way and show that to you and then add a little bit of my red pepper paste, which also has a little bit of heat and show you just two different um, ways to do that. And then I'm gonna swing around, um, come up close uh, and answer your questions. So bear with me. Oh, one thing. A little bit of uh, lemon zest. And this is just a green lemon, it's not a lime. They're very common in Greece. Uh, the vegetable markets are teeming with beautiful uh, fruit and produce right now. It was such a pleasure uh, to visit my neighborhood farmer's market. Oh, and I smell that beautiful astringency. It's perfect. Now, this is not something um, that would appeal most likely to people who are watching their gluten intake, but if you're not watching your gluten intake and you're looking for something healthy and nutritious and easy and extremely uh, flavorful and rich with a rich complex flavor, trahana is, is for you. It's, it's, I think it's one of the superfoods of Greece and there are many. But this in particular uh, just has an appeal because it's also so comforting. So I'm going to serve it up in you know, kind of a very, very traditional way, which is just um, just plain like that, which I think you can see, yeah. But I have a few surprises in this little bowl. I have... Um, just some roasted uh, uh, oyster mushrooms. Um, in fact, they were left over from a dinner that I had last night. So I just took them out of the fridge and I'm adding them as garnish to this, a little bit of um, feta cheese over the top, which also the, the, the sourness of the feta cheese works beautifully um, with the hana, and that is, a very, very common and traditional combination. 
And I like to add um, a little bit of smoked sea salt, kind of a finishing salt, one of my favorite uh, ingredients, also something that we sell uh, online on this, in the store, and a little bit of this beautiful Spartan uh, oregano. Uh, although a lot of the things out here I actually do uh, carry, so I figured why not use them and show you uh, some ideas for how to use them. So I think you can see that. Okay, I will take a spoonful. I hope you see it better. And you can see how deliciously dense this is. And the mushrooms work really nicely. This is real, this is total earth food. So one other variation, one second, with a little bit of color. and some spice. I'm just gonna add a little bit of this beautiful Northern Greek red pepper paste. And this will change completely now. I could also add mushrooms to this. I could also, um, you know, maybe throw in some chopped olives would be quite nice, almost as just a little garnish, but I'm gonna garnish this with yogurt. And I just wanna show you, um, what that looks like. So I'm so happy to be um, back doing the Facebook Lives. Um, I'm planning uh, to do more of them, even as the summer is upon us. So that's what, uh, th th that's what this looks like with a little bit of the red pepper spread in there. And if you wanted to add a dollop of Greek yogurt, um, or even maybe a few drops of um, you know, you know, hotter hot sauce, uh, that would work nicely too. So let me just get a little bit of Greek yogurt over there. Now this is I serve krachana, you know, even at you know, sort of fancy dinner parties. I think it's just um, really, really interesting. Uh, food, uh, food, and I will drizzle this uh, with a little bit of some of our extra virgin, one of our extra virgin Greek olive oils, and some black pepper. And this is uh, virgin two. I don't know if you can see that. And that is just um, the same exact soup with a little bit of that uh, red pepper uh, paste added to it, a dollop of Greek yogurt, and a drizzling of extra virgin Greek olive oil. So I'm going to swing around and uh, sit down and answer some of your questions or all of your questions. So let me just come around uh, this way. Okay, so let's see. Um, hello again, everybody. Thank you for tuning in from all over the place, it seems. Um, I'm just wondering if you have any questions. Uh, hi, Margaret. Hello from California. Thank you for tuning in. It's early in the morning in California. Uh, let's see. Oh, I have a few friends on, on here too. A couple of other Californians. Please ask me any questions and please remember um, you can go to the store if you'd like, uh, use the code word TRAHANA, T-R-A-H-A-N-A, and we're offering 15% uh, off of everything that we're selling. Um, we're also waiting for some amazing uh, Greek food products to come uh, in about a month. Uh, let's see. So Dimitra Fotakidou is saying in Greek to me, for those who don't understand it, uh, that TRAHANA uh, is her favorite breakfast. And I can totally understand why. It's something that I often eat for breakfast. It will hold me for most of the day. Um, uh, Diana, you're asking me uh, what I'm cooking. I, I just cooked uh, two versions of uh, trahana, two very easy versions of trahana. Uh, one um, with some oyster mushrooms as, and some uh, crumbled feta on top. 
and another added, to which I added a red pepper spread and topped with a little bit of Greek yogurt. Um, hello from Chicago. Hi, Gloria. Uh, Diana, you're asking me if you can eat trachana for dinner. You can for sure. And I, I just mentioned a few minutes ago that I do um, sometimes often serve it um, as a starter. I'll serve it even sometimes in a little uh, demitasse cup, like a Greek coffee cup, because it's very filling. So when I do the classes in Ikaria, for example, uh, that is something that I, I love to teach people about Rahana. And I'll, because it is so filling and we usually have, you know, half a dozen different dishes, uh, I'll make, um, I'll just I'll serve it in a little demi test cup just for people to get, you know, taste of. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there are different types of trahana. I was using uh, the one that we carry in the store, which is a sour trahana from the Southern Peloponnese. It's called Xinos trahana. Sour is Xinos, Xino. Uh, there are quote unquote sweet trahana uh, varieties, which are made with whole milk and tend to be a little bit blander if you like more neutral flavors. Uh, there's some interesting um, regional varieties, but uh, you know, kind of one thing at a time. Uh, uh, Sherry, you're asking me if we expect to get some of our sold out items back soon. Yes, we do, very soon. Uh, the shipment is uh, in the water right now, so hopefully by the end of June it'll be uh, you know, on our pages. And we're doing a whole redesign on the shop, and I'm doing some redesign on my, um, uh, on my website as well. Uh, let's see, hello from New York. Hello, Jane from, from New York. Uh, <laughs> You're saying Yaya couldn't find it anywhere. Uh, you can find it now, and it's it's really easy to cook. Drahana is. Let me show you the granules. Bear with me for a second. I'm sorry, you're seeing uh, one of my son's childhood drawings that slipped in its frame uh, during the four months that uh, we were out of the house. He was. That was done. Maybe I don't know. 14, 15 years ago. So this is what uh, drachana looks like. It's very, you know, very small granules. And they're really, I, I like to eat it raw. It's good. It's a tart. Um, so this is something that you can, you, it's, it's super easy to cook. It turns into something very filling. Um, you can make a whole meal out of it. Um, it's a wonderful starter. It's a wonderful breakfast item, uh, either sweet or savor. You can use it. Uh, you can serve it with feta cheese. You can serve it with yogurt. You can serve it with honey or, or uh, petimezi, grape syrup, grape molasses. Um, just um, do you eat it a lot with chicken or lamb? Sylvia is asking me. Uh, there are many dishes in the Greek kitchen that uh, are combinations of trahana and, and chicken or trahana and lamb. And these tend to be very... Uh, rustic, um, uh, uh, older type dishes. And again, you know, think of, think of the necessity of having filling food when you have a lot of mouths to feed, if you're, you know, talking about a generation or two ago and, you know, stuff that isn't expensive, uh, that goes a long way. Um, you know, trahana, and that's, that stores forever. You usually they're stored in, um, muslin bags in a, a cool, dark place. So in the cellar, for example, uh, in older Greek homes, you know, country homes. Uh, I, I just stick it in my closet. Um, uh, thank you, George, uh, for telling me that I'm the only thin uh, cook you trust. Uh, maybe you need to uh, clean your camera lens there because <laughs> I'm not so thin, but anyway, thank you. Uh, and uh, Tina is sharing a tip for using, crispy bacon is great with rahana. It is delicious with rahana. Or bits of panceta. Um, it, it's wonderful. Um, you can also, there are also some traditional fish soups that you find throughout the Aegean. I think I have a recipe for that in my Ikaria book, if I remember correctly, um, which is a, an old recipe from the island. Uh, it's a fish soup uh, where instead of rice, uh, trahana is added. So again, it just has many, many different uses. You can make the most basic uh, dish, which is this kind of thick, beautiful, rich, uh, dense porridge, or uh, you can do you know, somewhat more elaborate or a little bit more refined dishes with it. Um, 
Uh, Georgia is sharing with us that, ah, that I didn't know. That in, I know that the, that the Hana in Cyprus is much harder and the pieces are bigger, kind of similar to what you find on the Isle of Crete, where the pieces are almost, you know, kind of like as big as my finger. Um, but I don't think, I've never seen uh, that soaked in Crete. So I don't know about the Cypriot one, but thank you for sharing that because I didn't know. And it served at weddings in the early hours. Well, I think you forgot one little detail here. Uh, in the early hours of the morning as comfort food after singing and dancing and maybe drinking, because that if there's one thing that will calm your stomach after a night of uh, you know, strong Cypriot wine or strong any wine, um, it's a beautiful, rich bowl of trahana. Um, Thank you, Artemis, for loving Ikaria. I love it too. I can't wait to get there. Um, I have a few Californians here today. Um, and Lena, Lena is asking about uh, whether it needs to be thinned. It, as I mentioned when I started making the porridge, um, it will take a minimum six times its volume in water. So I cooked half a cup and I added three cups of, of uh, broth, actually. Uh, vegetable uh, broth, vegetable stock. So if you cook it with some sort of stock or broth, it'll definitely be even more flavorful. Um, I added a little bit of salt, and um, you can. It, and the, if it sits, if you cook it and it sits, and maybe I can show you that now. Yeah, I can show you. If you cook it and it sits, it actually gets almost solid. You can see that it's very dense. So if I were to reheat that uh, to eat it, you know, for dinner, I would add a little bit more liquid to it. Just, just enough to, to get it to the consistency that you want. Um, and Mac is sharing that he, he is finding that food tastes better without salt. Um, I have to say that I love salt. So I usually add, I have a salty palate. And I'm lucky enough to have kind of borderline low blood pressure, so I don't, uh, it's never been a problem for me. But I, if you want to cook something without salt, you know, the two basic kind of tricks for making food um, taste much better, uh, it, one of them is to add lemon zest. That's something I do a lot. And the other is to use um, any, any sort of uh, pungent herb. So things like mint and fresh oregano and marjoram, those will all make your food taste much, much better. And usually, you know, they're pretty much, you know, you can pretty much use them in almost any dish. Um, uh, you don't eat it al dente, Lena. Uh, you have to cook it until it's quite soft and almost mushy. Um, it's, it's just not cooked if it's al dente. So that's something uh, you want to keep in mind. Um, and John is sharing that he doesn't uh, uh, cook traditional Greek food, but uh, the combination is interesting. I think so too. Uh, I often add a little bit of uh, really spicy, you know, hot sauce to this. Even Tabasco is not spicy enough for me. I have a really, I love um, peppery food. So I want to uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, Ah, Le Eleni is sharing that her mom would make her own trahana. It's not that hard to make. Uh, there are, I, I actually have a recipe for it in my Ikaria book. And I have one recipe that uh, calls not for, you can dry it outside, that's the traditional way to do it. But you can also um, uh, do it in the oven. And my friend Martha Shulman, who used to write the uh, healthy eating column for the New York Times, also, if you look online uh, there, you'll probably find her recipe for homemade trahana, so that will also work. Uh, but again, I mean, it's much easier to just buy a bag. It's, it's kind of a long process to make it. Um, so it's so nice that um, people from all over the world tuned in. Uh, remember, um, so let me see, Chicago, California, Greece, um, New York, uh, I'm already missing it. Um, and Diana, it's pretty high in carbs. Yeah, it's, it's you know, wheat and, and dairy. So it's pretty high in carbs. Um, you know, pan metronariston, everything in good measure. I think that's kind of 
that's to me that's the wisest approach to eating and if you're eating healthy food um you know our body needs carbs uh so you know once in a while it's comforting um and sherry is asking me whether you could use it in a zucchini pie yes that would be a great place to use a handful of it because zucchini is uh quite watery so you don't want your phyllo to get soggy if you're making a zucchini pie and i often add it to zucchini pies uh let's see any more questions i think that's it so uh, thank you all for tuning in. Um, if you want to do, if you want to go to the shop, use the uh, code word Trahana, T R A H A N A, and I'm offering a 15% discount off of everything today. And uh, we'll get, we'll be getting, we're waiting for a whole new shipment of some amazing uh, new Greek ingredients and the old stuff that everyone loves. Uh, my Greek table is out there. It's uh, it's on the air. We're all over the country. We are uh, premiering in New York on June 14th. Uh, we're in all the major uh, urban areas right now: Chicago, L.A., uh, Boston, um, you know, and other places all over the country. Season three is beautiful. Uh, the food is really great in season three. We did Greek islands uh, and coastline, coastal areas. So. It's a really, I think it came at a very timely uh, period because so many of us are yearning to travel, but still a little bit reticent about doing that. Um, so you can travel uh, by watching my Greek table and uh, maybe plan a trip to Greece next year. Uh, that's kind of what we're all banking on. Uh, I think that's it. I'm going to sign off. Uh, thank you again. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll be doing more of these as I get more settled uh, in, back into back into my routine in Greece. Um, and in a few months, uh, hopefully, God willing, I'll have a whole new kitchen uh, that I'm building right now uh, in a new space downtown. And I'll tell you more about that as that time approaches. But for now, I'm going to be working out of my uh, home kitchen uh, in the apartment where I raise my kids. Um, that's about it. Enjoy the weekend. Happy Memorial Day. And stay safe. Lots of love. Bye-bye.